Hi, good evening. Hello. Hi. Good evening. From Dallas. How's everything in Dallas? Okay. It is cold. <laughs> it's cold. Oh, we should bring Dallas, you over. see what's cold. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. If it's cold in Dallas, then you know it's really cold. Okay. We're in Texas, so anything below 40 or 40s is cool. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. Sure. I can deal with I can I can live with that. Okay, so oh one second. One second, I'm so sorry. Okay, now it's better. Beautiful. How are you, Nisim? Shalom, Rabbi. How are you? Okay, thank God. Baruch Hashem. How was your day? Good, just good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Hope your day was good too. Beautiful. Baruch Hashem. Okay. So now we're going to try again. Set up the screen. Okay. Why don't you come visit us, Nisim? Grace us with your presence personally. Okay. Where are we holding here? All right, so my marker is on you, Bet. Right. Correct? Uh, Bet Yosef. Bet Yosef. Okay, beautiful. So it says like this, Ve'im Yeshlo, right? That's the one? Mm -hmm. This is you, Bet, and you can all together. Im Yeshlo, Kama Begadim, Shel Arba Kanfa. I'm sorry, I just wanted to stop for a second. Tell everybody, you know, what we, we, we talked about yesterday. What is the shy size of the Talit Katan, the Shi'ur? Mm -hmm. So the proper shiur, it says in Yakut Yosef, is the length 96 centimeters, width 48. So it's like pretty much half of what we said yesterday. I got I got mixed up, you know. That's why I told you guys wait until I check it. You know. So this is the this is the shiur. So basically, yeah, it's two amot. It the length is two amot, which uh, and the width is one ama. This is the minimum size for everybody. It's one size fits all. <laughs> so as we said, right? Because so we're, we're talking about a katan, you know, a katan can put it on. You know what I mean? On his body, on most of his body. Nisim, you got that? Nisim? That's the minimum. I'm sorry? That's the minimum size. This is the minimum size. I'm sorry, what are you saying? No, I said, uh, uh, so 98 and 48 width. Because 96, you... is the, 96 is the length, 48 is the width, which is half, right? Half. Mm -hmm. Exactly half. Okay. So that means we're talking basically the length is about a meter, right? And the width is about a half a meter. That's what we're talking about. Okay, which is not so bad, you know, but can you imagine? We're afraid that people are gonna even wear something smaller than that. And therefore the bracha will be bracha batala. This is the reason why we don't bless on it. You know what I mean? This is the reason why we don't bless. But don't say you're in yourself. It looks like the yourself likes me, you know? He likes me. Why? Because he says, if you know that your talit has a shiur, you can bless on it. He says, even though the minhag is not to bless. So I guess I'm... <laughs> I remember, 96 yeah, centimeters. yeah, ninety-six centimeters. Yeah, yeah. It's a meter, you know, basically. Yeah, one meter. You know. Uh, so basically, that's what you have. So yeah, it, it does say right. If you know for sure you got it, you can bless on it. You know, God bless you. Right? You bless. God bless you. But by, by the way, it's what it says in Why do we bless? Well, every time you bless Hashem, Hashem blesses you. So there you go, right? <laughs> okay. Recap yesterday. Yeah. We said we still don't bless on the morning, even if it's the right side. We accept it with the right. We we do a tali Yeah. This is the minhag, you know. But as, as we said, right, depending on what, what you're doing, there's different variations on that, right? Whatever. But yeah. Right. Right. Yeah.
So you don't do it either, right? This, this is what, what you do? What? You don't bless on Talit Katan? You do Talit Gadol, right? You have to have in mind the Katan. You know that, right? You have no, to have no, it in mind. No, no. Now you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it's done. Yeah, as long as you're not putting them at the same time, you know, in the same room, whatever, you know. Yeah, that's that would be okay. But it's not, there's no need for that, you know. There's no need. I mean, it's just uh, yeah. It seems like the universal minhag is not to do that today, you know. As I said, right? I'm telling you, going unless you're not going to put talit gadol afterwards, you know, then you have to you should bless some talit katan if you know you have the size. If you know you got the size. Usually, you know, like guys like you, you know, like us here, we're big enough, you know, that we have the size. You know I mean, in other words, if the talit fits your body, you know, it's big enough for your body, that should be, that should do it. You know what I mean? That should do it. So, yeah. the problem is, you know, the problem is like this, you know, some people, what they like to do is they, they, they grab the talit from their kid, you know, and they wear it sometimes, you know, because they, they, I don't know, something's it's in the laundry, whatever. Right? So, this is, you know, when you get into question marks. And when you're taking your kid, when you steal your kid's talit, you know you got something. <laughs> right. There's okay. definitely they bless only for for you know for the purposes of learning, right? Not, uh, ah, yeah, for them it's chinuch, of course, you know. But they bless, you know. The for chinuch we do bless, you know. We do bless for chinuch. Right. This is the rule, you know. So yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. That's the, that's the story. All right, very nice. So okay, now we got that out of the way, right? Just want to make sure everybody got the right amount of size. There shouldn't be any misunderstandings, whatever. 96 length, 48 width. God bless. Okay. Vim yesh lo kama bigadim shel abba kanfot. Right. So he has several bigadim with four corners. Right. As we said. Right. Talit gadol, talit katan, blah blah blah. Kulam chayavim betzitzit. They're all chayav betzitzit. Each one has the obligation of tzitzit. So it doesn't go on the obligation. Doesn't go on the person. It goes on the beged. You know what I mean? Of the tzitzit. That's very important to understand. Kulam chayav betzitzit. Vim levasham bebait echad. Ah, so if you're gonna put them on in one shot, as we said, right? In one in one doing, you can do bless one and have in mind both of them, right? That's what you do. But if you're gonna make have sick between them, right? So you gotta bless on you gotta bless on each one. Right? So this is that's pashut, says Maran bit yourself. Interesting, right? Overall time, he doesn't live in our generation, he doesn't know what's going on with us, you know. Okay, so <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> right, so there's an Orchot Haim, as we said, he's the, he's the Tamid of the Rosh. Right, Matsati Shesh Omrim. Some say, Shen Sarik Leatilat Ela Ba'elion. Oh, so he says, there, are, there is an opinion that says, you only have to put Tzitzit on an upper Beged, not the, not the inner ones. Oh, that's how it could do. Right, exactly. Yeah, uh, or whatever you're wearing, whatever you may be wearing. Ad Khan, right? Vani Omer, so he says, I say, the svarat de So he says, this is not really correct, this thinking. You know, not proper thinking, not proper svarat, uh, not proper idea. Right? And nobody, nobody's concerned about this. In other words, nobody cares about the shita. It's like a lone wolf somewhere, you know, it's, uh, somewhere, you know, not really very, very recognized. Right? So he says, uh, and that which he wrote, that if he wore them in one shot, right? It's, one, it's enough to do one bracha. So it says, Oh, so he says, that's only when that when he blessed, he had in mind all the big adim that he's putting on. He had in mind all of them. Right? Uh, but if he wasn't thinking about all of them when he put when he said the bracha, so he said, bless on each one. <clears throat> Even if you're doing one after the other, right? Uh, it says that, that's what it says in the Agur, Beshem Arashba, in the name of the Rashba. Okay, beautiful. Then it goes on to say, So he says, Therefore, if you're if your custom is to do Talit Gadol, in the Bet Knesset, in the Shul, right? So if you're custom is to do Talit Gadol in the Bet Knesset, in the Shul, right? So over there in this Perk, right? Mem Gimel Amud Aleph. I think this is in Menachot, right? Masachet Menachot. Rabbi Yudha Rama Techelta. So Rabuda used to put this uh, whatever some kind of beged right with uh, with tzitzit right and he blessed on it in the morning litatef he would bless bless litatef uparich and the Gemara objects against this midrama savar 
המצוות עשה שלא הזמן גרמה היא עמי מברך כל ספרא וספרא אה, so he says if he holds right that it's a, it's a positive commandment which was not time bound not time bound then why does he bless every morning כלומר it means to say according to this right since night is also time of tzitzit he should have only blessed the first time and from there and onward it's going to be like one long day because you know there's no have sex there's no interruption like Nisim talked about you know last time right he wears it all the time blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. you know uh, so this is according to the shita that says that night is also a man of tzitzit which we don't hold by but we don't hold by that you know but anyway right according to this opinion right so he says, you know why? Because the night doesn't really make interruption. Point to this shita. Umeshane, so answers, Sabar la kirabi, rabbi. So he says, no, he holds like rabbi. Right? Who's the rabbi? Rabbi Danasi, right? The Amar, Tfilin calls man, Shemenechin mevarecha lehen. That what? That each time, you, he says, rabbi says, every time you put Tfilin, you got to bless on it. Right? Or alternatively, a different way to answer. Call shata nami rabbi uda inish tzniya hu hava. Vela shara leglime kuleha yoma uparich. Uh, so he says. Also, another another an- way to answer it is that what every time, all the time, right? Rabbi Yuda was inish. Uh, uh, yeah, one second. Yeah, inish tzniya hava. He was a person who was modest, right? Very humble, whatever. But lo shay leglime kuleha yoma. So you know what it is. He wasn't taking off his beged every day. He was like leaving it, just sleeping with it, whatever. You know, uparich. And it asks a question there regarding that. Maishna mitzafra says, what's the difference about, about morning? Right? Uh, Rashi, so Rashi explains, we're going to see now what, what's, what's going on. Maishna mitzafra libarech keshu omed umitatefa. Right? It should be just like the morning. When you, when you, in the morning, right? You bless on it when you, when you put it on. Beashmurat, right? Kodem hayom. Ah, so it's, it's even, even what? You should bless on it even uh, at night, before the daytime comes, according to this opinion. Meshane answers, Ki Mishnam Ki Meshane Mechesut Yom Lechesut Laila. So he says, because there's a difference between the day clothing and night clothing, like pajamas, whatever, right? Upirish Rashi, Rashi explains, So he says, you know, he had two talitot, two talit with tzitzit, right? Echad le yom, echad He had one for the daytime, and he had one for the nighttime, you know? So he used to take one off and put the other one on, right? switch them, you know? Katava Rosh, so says the Rosh regarding this, the Kasheli, difficult for me, says, Amai Mevarech Petzafra, why does he bless in the morning? Gam Be'erev Hayav Tzarech Levarech Keshemit Atev Talit Tzach Shelayla. He should also have to bless in the, in, the, uh, in the evening when he puts on the night clothing, right? Because he's switching them. Ve'have Le'e Le'memar, he should have said, Umbarech Tzafra Ufanya, he blesses, he should have said like this, he blesses every morning and also in the, in the evening. In other words, every time he switches his clothes, he blesses again. Means to say that, right, the, the talit of the night, he would not take it off in the day. He would wear the cloak of the talit of Laila. Most of the time, he wouldn't take it off. Even at night. So he says, therefore, so he says, therefore, he doesn't really have a constant, you know, uh, constant uh, scheme over here. Then, that he blesses at night. He doesn't always do that. So he says, you've learned from here, says the Rosh. The Adam Shehulabush Talit Katan, the person who's wearing Talit Katan, Shehul Noseh, Kol Hayom, that he's wearing all day, wearing all day Talit Katan, like uh, most of us do, I hope, I hope we do. Right? Okay, Shehul Mitpalel Mitatef, right? When he, when he, uh, when he used to pray, go to, go to prayers, Mitatef with Talit Gadol, he would put Talit Gadol, you know, like we do, right? So he has to bless on that. Why? Because the person is obligated to put tzitzit on every beggar that he has, right? Four corners, obviously, right? Like we said, four corners. Each one is a mitzvah by itself. You know, each beggar is a mitzvah by itself. Uh, oh, so he says, But if he puts one after the other, below have sick without any interruption, he's going to put one blessing for all of them. This is the language of the Rosh. Same as the Rabbi Yerucham. Says the Agur, 
So it says in the beginning, Maharam used to have this custom, Shalol itatef, but talit katan ad seton in Beta Knesset. Ah, look what he says, right? He wouldn't put talit katan until he left the shul. <laughs> in other words, he put first got talit gadol for the prayers, and then he would finish the prayers and then put talit katan. Interesting, right? Vaz if sik badvarim ad betalim. So ah, look what he says, right? And then he would talk some things, you know, some dvarim betalim. In other words, mundane talk, right? Uvelav shul, uvelach al uvelach, and then he would wear it and. Uh, and bless on it, right? And by the way, you see from here that this half hour thing they told you, somebody said the half hour, is not really correct, because he would just talk some things, you know, interrupt, and then he would have to bless again. So you see from that, you don't need a half hour. I don't know what it is, half hour thing. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Who's the one to mention that half hour thing? I mean, whatever, somebody mentioned it. It was... Uh, okay, Are you talking about that when you go to the bathroom and it takes oh, 30 yeah. minutes, you have to say a bracha on the city? That was Abraham, 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 on, on the Zoom. Abraham Chaimov. You know Abraham Chaimov? Yeah. No. Zoom. Okay, whatever. I'm sorry. What are you saying? Are you talking about when someone goes to the bathroom and then 30 minutes later, if, if it takes 30 minutes, he'll need to make another bracha? Yeah, you, you don't even need the bathroom. We're just talking about, you know, like he took it off for half hour and he puts it back on, you know, for some reason, whatever. Let's say he, you know, like we do, right? You know, on Shabbat, you take it off to, to do Kiddush. I don't want to get my palate dirty with wine, you know, stuff, stains, you know. Right. So I take it off and then I put it back on, the, you know, like in a half hour. We say Rabbi, something before, uh, huh? Yeah, I'm sorry. So the, the baguette, you say for mitzvah. What do you refer to baguette? The four corners of... Baguette means clothing. The clothing. Yes. That's that's how we say in Hebrew, you know? I'm sorry. What were you, uh, what were you guys saying? Yeah. So what's the minimum delay? Like, what if your target gadol fell down? So there's no, there's no time limit here, you know? It's not like you're putting a stopwatch, you know? Okay, let me see, you know? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. No such thing like that. It doesn't say in halakha anything like that. What it, what, it, what it means is you went to do something else. You know, like you started some other activity. Like, you know, you go to do Kiddush, right? Doing Divay Torah over there, you know, eating some, uh, eating some, you know, uh, salty fish, you know, whatever. That's already an uh, interruption. You know what I mean? It's, uh, you went to eat. That's already an interruption. And you have to make a bracha afterwards? Yeah, that's the point of halakha. That's the way it is, you know? Right, so according to that reasoning, if I'm praying, yeah. and it actually loves me so. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk. We're gonna get to that. Picking it's, it up. Yeah, yeah. When it accidentally falls, you have to bless on it. You know, same thing with tefillin, as we mentioned before, right? If your tefillin like droops down, you know, that goes down, whatever. It's not in this place anymore. You have to bless again. Yeah. So the, it's strange a little bit to understand that, but some people think, oh, I have to go like to the moon, you know, and then I have to bless again. You know, only if I go to the moon. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. What do you say? So the three. Yeah. So that. 30 minute um, length, there's yeah. no such thing? No such thing like that, no. Huh. The 30 minutes is said about other things, you know, there's other things where we, t we talk about 30 minutes, laws of Shabbat, you know, we'll get to that later on, you know, we're going to discuss it now, but for instance, you know, like the issue of borer, you know, like sifting, I mean, like picking out one fruit from the other. So there we say, you know, that if you're going to eat within a half hour, you can, you know, sift it out now, you know, that's called like you're eating right away, you know, so that's called, you know, that, that regarding that halakha, we do say half hour. You know, <laughs> yeah, chopping up vegetables, yeah, similar thing, yeah, things like this, yes, 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 like half, grinding half an hour is okay, half hour, yeah, that's that's the limit, yes, yes. If you're gonna eat within a half hour, you're good, you know. So basically, if yeah. I take my tarit cut off, I went to the bathroom, I come back, it's, right? It's a I have to make a bracha. so it's a machloket between Maran and the achronim, you know, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna get that, you know, but according to Maran, you have to bless, according to many achronim, we, we don't bless. The custom, by the way, today is they don't bless when they go to the bathroom, you know, with most people, except me, you know, I'm the, I'm the oddball. oddball. I'm always the oddball, you know. Why? Because I believe in Maran, you know, like, you know, I, I want to go like Maran, you know. It's, it's, uh, yeah. That's my personal, you know, preference, you know. Because I think that Halakha is really like him. I don't, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what, 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 what's the question before. You know, according to most Rishon name, Maran is correct. What can I tell you? you know? So I don't even consider it a doubt, you know, like, I don't even, I don't even think about it. You know, but some people, most people uh, don't bless on that, you know, the, which is okay, by the way, you know, it depends, you know, different strokes for different folks, you know what I mean? Each person has his own approach in these things, you know what I mean? Uh, whatever, you know, it's, it depends, you know? Each one has what to rely on, you know what I mean? That's the way it is. You know, I, know. Yeah, I personally prefer to do like man, you know, most of these cases, I prefer to do like man. Uh, we have to see, you know, but I think that he was, uh, you know, there was, a, by the way, the big discussion between him and his sons regarding this halakha, you know, when you go to the bathroom, you know, there was a whole give and take, you know, they argued about this, him and his sons, you know, and uh, 
So Bezat Hashem, we'll check that. You know what, what they pass in the end over there. You know what I mean? Uh, what, what they pass in there. But anyway, right? This is the basic idea. You know, either you go like Maran or you go like the Achronim. Whatever, right? One or the other. Okay. So anyway, right? Uh, we're gonna get that. I'm just giving you now like a simple, you know, overview. But you know, let's be checked a little bit, bit more carefully, right? Just like the Shiur of the Talit, you know. I don't want to, you know, give you the wrong idea. So okay, whatever. But that's that's from my memory. That's what comes up. Okay, so anyway, right? Uh, so, he says, but this rabbi, Rab Moshe Parnas, right? Uh, oh, so he says, he says, then Maram changed his mind about this. So he used to wear it before. In other words, he didn't stop. He didn't do do that anymore to wear it after the prayers. That's what he got done. Ah, look what he says, right? He wouldn't bless until he came to the shul, right? And then he would do and they would have in mind both of them. And that's what we do, right? Today. This is the way we do today. So, you know, the, the conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? Okay, so the conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? The conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? The conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? The conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? The conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? The conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? The conclusion over here is like our custom, basically. Right? The conclusion over from Sayyam Ba, right, Ashkenazi, it's because he was the rabbi of Ashkenazi, right? I guess that's whatever. From Sayyam Ba, the Afilu Mishmush, the the Istaklut, the Katan, and Sarikh. Ah, so he says that he concludes over there that you don't even have to like play around with the Katan, you know, when you bless on the Gadol. In other words, you, in the Katan you didn't bless, right, according to this. So when you go to the Gadol and bless on it, you don't have to keep playing around with the little one, you know, in other words, the big one is already enough to cover it. We, we mentioned this yesterday also, this point. So he says, uh, but he was he was intending to do all his begadim. In other words, when he did that blessing on the Talit Gadol, he wanted to include everything that he had on. Um, so he had said, Asher Leboshe, that, that, that he had succeeded that, that he was wearing. Ad Khan, so, so, but from that edition, from that edition, lo evi ela mashen ahad ram betchila. But look very interesting, right? He only brought the ram's first opinion, not, not the conclusion of the ram. I mean, she cut out the Zerash and he writes like this. He took a had mina gdolim, mechuvata rach or zarua. So he says, one of the gdolim mentioned in the name of this rabbi, the Zerash and this language, im sach ben talit katan, talit gadol, like, ah, look what he says, right? Again, same thing, right? If he had, if he talked between talit gadol and talit katan, have a second, it's an interruption already. No half hour, no, no business like that. No such a thing like that. What is it? Have a second, sarik la chazo, barech. Right, you have to also you have to bless. He says, "Look, what I just, you had a discussion with somebody, you know. That's it, right? So why is that, by the way? What does the discussion do? That means you diverted your mind from the tzitzit. That's what it is, you know. This is the reason why you got to bless. So the whole the whole concept is like this, right? When you divert your mind into, into a different activity, you have to bless on the tzitzit. This is the way it works. This is the whole idea. Okay, yeah. There may be other opinions, by the way. Yeah, but what what is yeah. the issue then uh, if you bless on? And then in the same, under the same roof, you bless on the Tarik Gadol. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. The truth is that it doesn't. The roof doesn't really make a difference over there, because you know, according to Maran, each room is a separate domain. You know what I mean? This roof business is according to the other opinion, right. like the ones that were against Maran. But if you know what I mean? Same room, is that an issue? So as we said, right, according to this shita that we're discussing here, according to this opinion. Even when you're in the same room, if you made an interruption, you have to bless. You know, like downstairs, you know, when we do Kiddush. We're in the same room, you know, but uh, <laughs> we're doing an interruption. Right. You know I mean, that's the whole thing. So if you're not even, yeah. if you're not talking, but you, you, you went, you took a few steps. That's nothing. That's nothing. Is that's that nothing. No, no, that's not an interruption. Interruption is when you, you, your mind diverted, you know? Like, you know, the classic case, right, that I always, always tell you guys. He went to deposit money in the bank, you know? It took him five minutes, right? You went back and forth to the cash machine. You divided your mind to something else. What you just you know, that's very clear. Right I'm sorry? Or you just speak to yourself? Just say something. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you know, maybe you should go to the doctor, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, just, for, just not to make sure that you, you're not saying the rock out for, for nothing. Uh, if you're doing the... Get, after yeah. the get yeah. Down, you're doing the get down. Right. What, in the same room? You mean like, well, yeah, there's no reason to that. I mean, the truth is, you know, th there are cases where you could bless on that, but there's no reason to do that. I mean, really. 
I just yeah. You forget, in theory, in theory, right? You, forget, yeah. you said it on the katan, and now you have to put on the katan. So yeah, that, the best thing to do we like to go into a different room. You know, if you want to do it right away, like without any doing nonsense, just go into <laughs> without daydreaming, whatever, having some daydreams, <laughs> sleepwalking, whatever it is, right? Yeah, just go into a different room and bless. That would be that would that would do it. That would do it. According to man, right? According to the other acronym, you'd have to like leave the house, you know, like altogether. You know what I mean? Like you know, go out, go in the street, whatever. You know. <laughs> so if you're following, yeah. not following like Moran for for yeah. blessing of food, right? Which food are you talking about? Like, remember you said, like, if you see the bracha, you have to be in the room, if you're going from room to room. Right, right. Well, yes, 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 yes. Because Quente Maran, which, by the way, is most of the Rishonim as well, you know, it's a different domain. You know, each room is a different domain. That's the way it is. Quente most Rishonim. Mm -hmm. so, so you can't mix and match it. If you do it like the Maran... In the you should try to be consistent. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be the thing, you know? Uh... That's why they say, you know, that a person who mixes and matches, you know, it says in the Gemara, Masih Teruvim, sometimes he does like Bet Shalmai, sometimes he does like Bet Hillel. He's called a Rasha, you know, why? Because he's doing two do, do different things, you know, like, uh, you can't make up your mind, you know, you want to go like this side, this shita or that shita. what do you want to do, you know? You can't have both, the both. you have, can't have your cake and eat it too. You know what I mean? That's the whole thing, right? So you got to be consistent. I'm sorry, you were saying something, Nisim? Trying to switch from one. All right, by nothing, nothing. Okay. Absolutely, because it's the same idea, you know, same idea. That's that's why they warn you, the Chazal. You know, if you're gonna like, you know, do these things, make sure you know. That, in other words, you have to know that you you be consistent with the with these things. You know, the idea has to be consistent. Otherwise, you know, you get you're making contradiction basically. You know, you're contradicting yourself. You know, <laughs> that's what it is, right? Okay, good. So. uh very good. So he brought this the whole thing, right? Right. So he has to come back and bless again. Umaram So it's about Maharam who didn't go with the Tzadik Katan. But when he was going home, you know, he would put it on. Then he would bless on it. It seems the reason is like this. Because sometimes lo ayat tzarich leasiach ben atalitot. He didn't need to right, uh, just divert his mind between the one and the other. The gam lo ayar rashay leasiach, and he also wasn't permitted to do so. That's more. The lo tzorech. In other words, if there's no need, why should you do it? Now the chayev that's more. In other words, why should you cause yourself to make a different blessing? You know, if you don't need to. In other words, don't do it on purpose just to make a new blessing. You know, there's no reason to do that. What are you trying to do? Don't be a hero. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> don't cause yourself to do it. That's called brachal sheinat You know, which is all like brachal vatala. You know, very similar. Don't cause yourself to need another bracha for no reason. You know why should you do that? Mm -hmm. You know. So we should look for an opportunity to bless. Uh no, because there's an issue of blessing in vain. You know, so you got to be careful about that. You know what I mean? Uh, because according to Riff and Rambam, you're transgressing lotisa shem Hashem You know, you're transgressing one of the Ten Commandments by doing that. You know what I mean? It's, it's a very big deal. You know, big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. You gotta watch out for that. But how is it in vain? It's a balanced bracha. If you do the katana, right, but you caused it to come along. You know, you, there wasn't no need. You know, so it's like similar to blessing in vain. Bracha shenatzicha. You know, you gotta be careful with that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So by the way, we do that sometimes on Shabbat. You know, because we need a hundred brachot. You know what I mean? So we do these kinds of tricks. But on Yom Chol, you're not allowed to do that. Well, you know, don't do on weekdays, sometimes we do like extra brachot. You know, on Shabbat. You know. Blessing on this, blessing on that. You know, we try to do extra because we need a hundred blessings. Every, and we're short. On, we, we're short like twenty brachot on Shabbat because the Amidah is short. You know, only seven brachot. Right. You know what I mean? So we're coming out short about twenty brachot. So we shouldn't do ex over a hundred if we don't need it. In the weekdays, you have over a hundred as it is. You know, like if you're just oh, following the following this. Around. No, I'm saying. On Shabbat. Right? What about what about Shabbat? We shouldn't go over a hundred. But no, no, I, you're supposed to go over 100. That's all points. Over. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's all thing. David Amelech made Takana, he made a decree that we have to do at least 100 blessings every day. Right. But if you reach the 100, yeah. yeah, you already reached the 100. Right. But we don't count, you know, like, you know, so we just, you know, you know we don't, like, we're not, we're not, you know, we don't have a counter, you know, we're not using a calculator. You know what I mean? So we just uh, keep trying going, trying to go as you know as much as we can. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're trying to, you know, but there also you gotta be careful, you know, don't do crazy stuff, you know what I mean? It has to be within the parameters of halakha, you know what I mean? Don't go nuts, you know, uh, this kind of stuff. If not, I'm sorry, I'm just curious. If someone is chazan, right? For like Shahri Mukha, yeah. right? During Khazara, 
those repetition of those brachot, is that already considered the separate bracha? Like he has 14? Okay. Like he just made 14 brachot in the silent and during Chazar? So you're saying what you're asking, does it count? Does it count? for? It counts for you, the Chazan, but not for the people. That's what I'm saying. That's what it is. But why not for the people? Oh, good question. You, see what I'm you know why? Because they don't need that. It's not for them. In other words, they already prayed, you know? They, they fulfilled their obligation. I mean, they, so they don't need you. They don't need you. And according to the simple shot, right? Why do we do Chazar shots? So people don't know how to pray. You know what I mean? So the person who already prayed doesn't need you anymore. So therefore, right, he's not going to be, you know, he's not fulfilling his obligation with your blessing, with your blessings. This is the reason why it doesn't count for him. Yeah. You have to stay because the takana is takana. It's like a decree of the sages. You, know? you got to stay. Yeah. As we mentioned already, I don't know if you guys heard me, but I mentioned it something you know, once in a while. According to the Kabbalah, this is the main part of the prayer. Hazat You know what I mean? That's why you got to be silent. Don't talk. Right? Don't do any nonsense over there. Don't divert your attention. And don't also don't learn. You're not allowed to learn during Chazat Hashatz. Because you have to concentrate on the brachot. And by the way, you just reminded me. I see some people, you know what they're doing now? Downstairs for the next minyan. They're switching uh, Zvashi and Rabbi Tam, It's feeding, you know, during Chazat Hashatz. Which Maran told us not to do that. And the reason is because you should be answering Amen. You cannot answer if you're putting on feeding. You know what I mean? So I can't, I can't do that. Just, yeah. Yeah. So can... I'm sorry? Sorry. What's the best time to do that? Well, according to when in Maran's house, what we you know, the Shul of Maran, what we used to do, by the way, he made this like a minhag in, in Israel, you know, in general, right? That uh, not everybody does, does it, but uh, a lot of people do it. We used to do Chazat Hashatz, the Tachanun, you know, and then we would stop there, the five minute break, you know, put on, switch to Rabbi Tam, and then continue with the Ashrei. It was nice. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. You could just, can you just like, like switch Rashi to Rabbi Tam and also say Baruch Hu Baruch Shmuel and Amen. You can't when you're putting on you can't when you're putting on Tefillin to have sex. You can't say Amen. But it's a problem, not, you understand? But you're not gonna you're not saying Baruch for Rabbi Tam. Oh, good, 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 good. Ah, good, good question. So the truth is, you know that the rabbi talks about this uh, in his books, and he says, but according to Kabbalah, it's still have sex. You know what I mean? Uh, this is the reason why we, we don't say Amen. He's right. We don't bless on Rabbi Tam. You know, so you may think it's okay, right? You know, you may think it's okay, but Amen, we don't, we don't bless. It's, it's still considered we have sex. When the Kabbalah does have sex there? Wow. You know, so yeah, so we're careful about that. But we do answer Kedusha and Kaddish. We answer that. You know, when we're putting on Rabbi Tam. Yes, we do. For regular tefillin. For regular tefillin, I have to remember the halacha. I have to check it. You know, just slips my mind. But, uh, you know, yeah, so, yeah. There's so much doubt that we don't even take a breath. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, why should you bless twice? According to Allah, one of them is Pasul. You know what I mean? You can't bless twice. What if, you, what if, if you <laughs> Rashi is a Pasul? Yeah? I'm sorry? What if Rashi is a Pasul? Yeah? But the Minhag is like Rashi, you know? So therefore, we bless we bless on the one that the Minhag is like that. But according to Kabbalah also, by the way, you know, you're not supposed to bless on Rabbi Tam. Go figure. You're not supposed to bless on that. So in other words, the Halakha and the Kabbalah, they agree. They're on the same page, you know what I mean? Rabbi Tam, we do not bless at all, never. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so you, you when you get married, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, Nisim, when you get married, we'll talk about it. Nisim, okay, all right, let's go on. So it says, uh, okay, so it says, uh you can do one blessing. Why should you do two? This is Hayamis Tapek Imi Agadol. Then there was a doubt you should bless on the big one. Hilka Hayam Mamtin. So therefore, what was he doing? What was he doing? He was waiting a hard fila until after the prayers. And then he has to you know divert his attention to something else. Right? I'm sorry, not Ashre. Asheri. This is like a, a Posek, one of the Mefarshim on the on the Rosh, if I'm not mistaken. Katav Mikan Yeshraya. So it's from here you there's a proof. Oh, look what it says, right? If a person is wearing talit katan, he's wearing it all day. So what happens like this, right? When he goes to pray, talit gadol, right? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, he's got a blessing on that. 
אבל אם נתעטף בזה אחר זה, אבל אם יש דברים אחרי זה, בלי הפסק, בלי אינטראפשן, זה בדיוק אותה שאלה, נכון? בלי אינטראפשן. מברך ברכה אחת, יש דברים אחרים, מה שאתה עושה? או שתי הן, נכון? יש דברים אחרים על כל אחד, על כל אחד. ואשתא, אם באנו להשוות, אז הוא אומר, אם אנחנו באים לקומפר אחד עם השני, נראה מה הרם והשני, מה הרם והשני, צריך לומר, הוא רוצה לומר, זה רק דכתב השני, זה מה שהשני רוט, וזה אחר זה, אחד אחרי השני, בלי הפסק, בלי אינטראפשן, לאו דווקא, זה לא דווקא, אלא הוא רוצה לומר, אבל מי צריך לומר כזה, בלי הסך דת, בלי דיברנג את המים, לא כל זה, זה כל דבר, נכון? כל דבר, כל דבר, כל דבר, כל דבר, כל דבר, To make another blessing is when you divert your mind. Yeah, that's what Maran is saying, right? This is the language of Maran. In the Katab Maram, like Maram says, So it says, it seems to say from, me, says from here, the Davka be'odol lavush betalit achad. He's talking about he's still wearing one talit. Enon chayav levarech al hashani. That's not the blessing on the second one. Ela in ken hisiach dato. Unless he diverted his mind. Again, right, same thing. No half hour. I don't know why. Between this and this one. Aval poshet et. את זה, הוא רוצה ללבוש אחר, אבל אם הוא תיקס אף אחד, והוא רוצה ללבוש אחר, הוא מתחייב אפילו, הוא יכול להיות חייב לעשות את זה. אתה יודע למה? כי הוא לא יכול, כשהוא תיקס אף אחד, זה כבר כמו אינטרופציה. אתה יודע מה אני אומר? אז כשהוא תיקס אף אחד, הוא יכול להיכנס אף אחד, הוא יכול להיכנס אף אחד, אפילו לא יצליח את זה, אפילו אם הוא לא יצליח את זה, אבל עדיין, אתה יודע, יש אינטרופציה. זה כבר שאתה מתחייב את זה, אתה 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 Ravinu Hananel, the Leel that we mentioned above, Lo Mash Mahach, it's not really uh, implied like that. The Katav Haya Mamtin Ad Achar Atfila, because it says, right, that he was waiting until after the Tfila, Ad Shayat Tzarich Le'asiyach, that he would have to uh, divert his mind. Mash Mahach She'im Lo Haya Masiyach, so it implies that if he wasn't diverting his mind, Afar Gab, the Mistama Kvar Pashat Talit, even though, right, he already took off, right, uh, we're assuming that he took off Talit Gadol, when he came out of Shul, the Teknes said, ואפילו האחי, never less, he says, אי לא יסיח, if he wouldn't divert his mind, לא אהבה אמינה, לא אהבה אמינה, we wouldn't say, נכון, זה פרשת תלית הראשון, but if he took off the first תלית, אז לברכה, that the ברכה, he lost it today, right? ולא מבטא רבה, תלית שני, he's not going to put her with the second תלית, אלמא, בהסך דעת, תליה מבטא. So he says, you see from there, right, diversion of the mind is really the main issue. ולי דברי הראש ולבנו, ולבנו ירוחם דינים כפשטן. So says מרן, Because to me, right, uh, the Rosh, what we mentioned, Rabbeinu, which is the tour, Rabbeinu Yerucham, all these rabbis, right, which are basically one shita, right, one school of thought, you know, basically, right? Miren Kip Shatan, it says, like, a simple meaning. The whole Shemaniach Talit Katan Bebeto, look what it says, right? If you put your Talit Katan in your house, the Talit Gadol Bet Knesset, and the Talit Gadol Nesh Kshur, Tzarech Lachazor Barech, right, you have to make another blessing. The Halicha Bebeto, Al Tzitzek Bet Knesset, Chashi Vepsek. So you see, right, it says before Ash Baran, That when you go from the house to the shul, it's half sick. Right? So you don't need a half hour, it's going to be five minutes also. I mean, that's not really necessary to talk about this half hour business. So according to all this, right, we don't have this half hour. By the way, there could be some achronim who mentioned that half hour. You know, it's possible, you know? But according to this sheet, uh, no, no, you don't need a half hour. Don't need that. Okay, very good. So that's the whole story, right? Let's, let's go to the shulchanu. Very good. It's a nice bit to yourself, you know, really very descriptive. It teaches you a lot. You know, it is, you know, the... By the way, always, you know, when you go to Yeshiva and the Kolels, you know, they teach you one thing, that the main Torah that we learn, you know, the main education of Torah is from the Rishonim, you know, the words of the Rishonim. That's where we get our, drink our Torah, you know. So if you didn't learn the Rishonim, you're in trouble. You know what I mean? You're going to think. That's the whole thing, you know. That's where we get our whole, you know, the concept of the Halakha comes from the Rishonim. You know, because they're the ones who learn the Talmud, you know, in a very... very powerful way, you know, they understood what the Talmud means. From Rashi, Rambam, yeah. Rambam, Rashi, Ritva, yeah, all these, all these, all these, all these, Rosh, right, all these, all these guys, Tosfot, right, all these, these are the guys that we, you know, we're talking about from the year, year 1100, you know, around there to 1500, right, 400 years. This was the period of the, of the, of the Rishonim, you know. So these rabbis, you know, we can't, you know, also the Geonim, you know, the Geonim, but the Geonim were before that, you know, like, so, These were the rabbis, you know, that we can't mess with them. You know what I mean? Like, we can't argue with them. We have no way to, you know. And by the way, everything they say is like foolproof. You know, like, you, can't, you can't even prove them wrong. It's a question. If you try, it won't work. It's a question. <laughs> you know? It's a question. Yeah. Yeah. It's, my fault. it's questioning, like, their reasoning considered to be arguing? No, no, no. You can question. You know, there's no problem with that. What I'm saying is like this, you know, like, 
what we do, you know, if you, if you look in the introduction of the Bet Yosef, you know, what, what he says there is that, you know, like, we're not coming here to argue with the Rishonim. What we're doing is just basically, you know, saying we go according to the majority or, you know, these Rishonim or these Rishonim because there's a system. You know what I mean? Not because we know one is right and one is wrong. You know what I mean? They're all right. Just a matter of, you know, like, you know, doing it. We have a system. We have a, we have a method. That's the whole thing, you know, but we're not here to come to Maran already said that, by the way. He, he himself said, I'm not coming to argue with the Rishonim. I'm not going to, you know, tell you who's right and who's wrong. I can't do that. I mean, as all the more so 500 years later than we are, you know, we cannot do, do say things like this. You know what I mean? We can, we can ask questions. No, that's not a problem, you know. It's, uh, I, I always you should be analytical as much as possible, you know what I mean? Question, Don't be scared to analyze. No, but yeah. questioning like questioning like the logic. Like some people, logic. by the way, you know, say <laughs> but some people, you know, that I know here in our neighborhood, you know, uh, they're religious people, you know, nice, good people. God bless them, you know. But they don't like to use their mind, you know. Like they don't like to analyze. They're afraid to analyze. I mean, that's not good, by the way. It's in, not a good chacham. You know, chacham has to, yeah, in learning, yeah, you have to analyze. You know, you have to, you have to think. That's why Hashem gave you, you know, a brain, like to use it. You know, you gotta think about that. That's that's the way it is. You know, so. Uh, you know, they used to say, right, there was an old uh, commercial in America, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, you know, that's what it is. <laughs> a mind is a terrible thing to, don't waste your mind, use it, you know, if you've got give you the ability to analyze, you analyze, analyze. I'm saying, go ahead, what you say? <laughs> I forgot, okay. No, I'm like, yeah. one, my question, like, sometimes they may say something, yeah. and it could be like, questioning is like, why is this way that way? Or questions like, what? or question like, there are, there are like, ideology as in like they're saying like this way but wait a minute it makes no sense you know right like, yeah yeah i mean now the, you know the truth is that the all the gadolim you know that we saw in our generation also you know they always humbled themselves themselves to the vision you know what i mean in other words they ask questions there was analysis in the end though you know at the end of the day like you know we're not gonna go away from the vision you know I mean? and start make our own ideas we're gonna do that they have no right to do that i mean the way they learned the talmud is the correct way Right? And by the way, most of the Rishonim were not influenced by Kabbalah, you know? So the Halakha really, you know, by the Rishonim is not a Kabbalistic issue at all. That came later on, you know, with the Arizal, you know, these kinds of things. But uh, before that, you know, Kabbalah was not playing a really a major role in Halakha. You know, that's the way it should be, by the way. That's the proper way, you know? The Khatam Sofa used to say, you know, that mixing Kabbalah and Halakha is like shotmans, you know? Mm -hmm. Wool and linen together. It's like, because they don't belong together. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kabbalah is Kabbalah. Halakha is Halakha. It's two different things. You know? <laughs> okay. Kabbalah is Hasidut, you know? It's not Halakha. You, know, you can never say, you know, yeah, the Halakha, you know, uh, the Zohar is the Halakha or the Arizal. Is, it's not Halakha. Unless the Minhag became this way, you know what I mean? It's not Halakha. It's never Halakha. It's Halakha Hasidut. You know? So you have to know the place of each thing, you know, how to, how to arrange it. Okay. So we're gonna to go to Shulchan Aruch, right? Uh, you bet you gimel, two of them. <clears throat> okay. So then Shulchan Aruch, you bet. I'm sure you guys have a place. I don't have to tell anyone because you guys already know this, know this system. You're better at it than I am already because I don't use those books. <laughs> so it's as if you have some, several big adim. Each one has four corners. Right? Uh, they're all chayavim tzitzit. You can put them on without any interruption, one after the other, right? whatever, or together. And he was intending to put on all of them. One blessing is going to cover everything. That's the way it works. You know, but if you're gonna do have sex, right? Do as we said, right? Divert your mind, blah blah blah. Sarikh le barek, I'll call it got bless on each one. The had behua din, so the same thing applies. Im lohaya bedato bitchila al kulam. Same thing applies also if he, did, he wasn't intending to put all of them, you know. Uh have came up sick benahem, so it's considered to be like a sec, like interruption. So in other words, not having your mind in all of them is like interruption. Same concept in halakha. The same result, whatever you want to call it, right? So it says the Haga, the Ramah, the Chen Im Tashat Rishon, exactly what we just mentioned, right? Also, he says that Ramah, he brings it from Tuba Tadeshin, which we saw in the Bet Yosef. He says, right, if he took off the first one, before he put the second one, 
So you have to bless again, right? Because that first one, you know, the, you lost the blessing when you took it off. I mean, yeah. Same concept, but does that apply to food as well? That what? If the blessing goes on the food, right? Yeah. Let's say you said what I said, I'm not. Right. On, on the vegetable. Later on, you wanted to fridge and you took another vegetable, a different. Right. Vegetable. So there, there's a little bit different, you know, because we say like this the concept like this in Halakha, that when a person blesses, you know, in his house, you know, whatever, or somebody else's house, whatever, it depends, it changes when it's his house or somebody else's house. The point is like this, right? When you're in your house, you're blessing on some vegetable. Right, we we assume that you also have in mind all the stuff in your house. You know what I mean? So in other words, another vegetable is not going to give you another blessing. You know what I mean? Because uh, in other words, we know there's a possibility that you're going to go into you know go in your fridge, pull out something else, you know, and eat that too. Uh, so it's like all considered to be like in your mind, in your realm, in your right, in your domain. You know, so therefore we don't bless. But right, according to Maran, if you went to a different room, you'd have to bless again. You know, as we said, right? We're not talking about a meal, right? Yeah, we're not talking about a meal. Right? We're talking about just eating some vegetables. So according to Maran, if you went to the kitchen and came back, you have to bless again. Not for meals, right? For for vegetables, for foods. Yeah. So you're saying even if you don't have this in your mind, we assume it's your kitchen. Right, yeah, because it's in your house, you know, so it's like a possibility, you know. That possibility exists. So it's a little bit different in blessings, you know, than than, than it is with talit. Yeah. I'm sorry, what you want Okay. So that's it, right? Pretty much. Okay. Any questions on that? Or if we go on to you, you know. Okay. These are very important things to understand. Okay, so it says in Yudgimel, uh, if, he, if he puts Talit Katan, he blesses on it, right? Uh, then he goes to Shul, he's going to put Talit Katan in Shul. Talit Katan, you have to bless on it, because you, the, the walking to the Shul, right? Because going from Shul to the house to your Shul is Hefsek, Right? Even if you live a block away, like you guys, right? Uh, you know, that's the same thing. That's what I'm saying. Right? I'm I'm three blocks away. Right? Lucky me, right? <laughs> okay, right? That's the way it is. So uh, okay. Im haya the alichan beto yeah. Im haya chashiva Hashem said. Vein mitpalel betoch beto. Ah, what about if he's praying at home? Right? He, he didn't uh, go to shul that day. Right? Whatever. Right? He got stuck at home. Im haya dato mitchila gam al tarit gadol. If his intention was also in Talit Gadol, the law of sequence time, there was no hepsek, there was no interruption, right? The sicha or bedvai machrin, or with whether you talked, right, or with some other things that right, was mentioned right before, right? You went to another room, right? That's also going to Maran, right? Enot tzarich rachazol barech, you don't have to bless again. So there you go, right? So that's in other words, if a person is in one room, okay, uh, and according to the other acronym, it's the whole house, right? The whole house is like one room. So depending on which way you go by, right? Either way, right, if you're home and you blessed on Talit Katan and you didn't do any interruption between that and Talit Gadol, you don't need to bless on Talit Gadol. You know, that's, that's the way it is, right? So what does it mean to, to interrupt? As we said, right? It's always like, you know, diverting your mind. That's what it's all about, you know? And by the way, that would include, like, let's say, if you got a phone call, right? And, you know, somebody just got involved in like a conversation with somebody. I mean, not just say hello. You know what I mean? We're not talking about that, right? I say hello. No, I'm not talking about that. You get into a conversation, you know, let's say, you know, some, something came up, you know, like, you know, with you, it would be like, you know, computers, right? Somebody called you up, they had a problem with their computer, this program, blah, 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 you know, and you got diverted with that. You'd have to make another blessing. That's the whole thing, you know? Your mind got diverted. Okay, very good. That's the whole idea. But, uh, you know, in the acronym, there may be some other ideas, you know, coming in there. Uh, uh, I'll check in Yakut Yosef Marina there, you know, and I'll tell you guys what it says there about these things tomorrow. Yeah, okay, so we're done with that. And now we're going to Yudalad, which is in the Bet Yosef, right? There's a tour. Oh, there's a tour there. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. I'm not sure. Did we read it yesterday? Uh, it's like a tour. Did we finish the whole tour? We finished the whole tour. All right, we finished it. I'm not sure. Okay, let me just check one more time. Just to make sure. Yeah, I think we did finish it. I think you're right. But I'll just check one more time. Um, yes. There was a. You guys did the tour you came yesterday, right? 
Acho que é com o Festival de Tua, já. Ah, ok. Okay, I'll just read the back to yourself, you know, whatever, and we'll see what we can get by. If not, I'll go back there and I'll check whatever needs to be checked. Bet you stuff, right? You doubt it. <clears throat> I think we already read it, so I'll explain it to you, by the way. It's also, it's also quoted here, you know, so you can see what it says here. Okay. It says like this, right? In Pashat Talito, if he took off the Talit, he doesn't want to put it back on right away. So then when he comes back to wear it, he has to bless again. Right, but if he wants to put it on right away, right, so on, so on, so on. So says Maran regarding this, right? If his intention was not to put it right away, since he diverted his mind again, right, same thing, right? So you have to bless again. But if his intention was to wear, wear it right away. I think it's a doubt whether he has to uh, bless again. Umakom uh, Umakom Right? So what's the doubt? What's the doubt here? Because we hold the Because we learn all these halachot from Tfilin. Right? Right? Because we hold the Uksha Kola Torah from Tfilin. Because we learn all these halachot from Tfilin. Right? Regarding the whole, this issue. Because it's a bad karma of the Kiddushin. Like it says in Kiddushin, Lamet Hayamud Aleph. The Amina, and we say over there, in Sukkah also, and Men Babam Aleph, with Tfilin. Regarding Tfilin, what would you say? The whole emma that means me mash mash all all the while that you're feeling you're feeling you're you're groping them. Me varech, you bless perush im zazum im command. So what is it really telling you here? But if it, as we said, right, if the film moved out of its place, you know, and lost its location, right, mash mash behind, and you feel it, the chazian to put it back into its place. Come on, be kind. So you gotta bless on that. That's what it's saying, right? Yeah. As we said, be kind. Me ma kashe sinan mi rosho legamre. Ah, so he says, you know, maybe this this is talking about where he took it off his head altogether. So you have got to bless, right? Why? Because all the more so, right? If they move from their place, you don't take it off. The since he took it off his head, they got me altogether. Even though he wanted to return them, miad right away. It's more fitting to bless. Because in case of where they just moved from their place, the bad. They were not taken off altogether. Or maybe that's possible to do, do say a different way. It's talking about when it moved from its place. Who the ta'un bracha? Then it needs a blessing. You know why? Because it moved without his without his knowledge. In other words, he didn't intend it to move it. But it just fell down, drooped. You know, uh, that's what we we're talking about before. But if he moved it himself a little bit, you know, whatever. But he wants to return it right away. He doesn't have to bless. The whole adata Why? Because if his intention is to re return it right away, it's not really, it's not really considered you moved it. The who the 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 mesiram the gamre. Also, same thing applies. He takes them off altogether. It's not really considered like he took took it off. In other words, if he intends to put it back right back on, right? Says that this is intention not there. He, he inclines this towards this this fara. If, if so, he says the mesira talit. So then, then now let's go to talit, right? We learn from there, but talit. So how does it turn out? If you take off the talit, but your intention was to put it back right away, right away. So you don't have to bless. You know that's fine. Zeu biur divrei Rabenu says this is the explanation of Rabenu the tour. About any idea ma Allah al dato, but he says I don't really know what he thought. He's tapik bechach. Why does he have a doubt about this at all? To have the hedia because explicitly, I mean, we say explicitly pek lula be'arba over there in sukkah that we mentioned masachet sukkah. The Rava have a makdim the kai ayel abet the abet knesset. So it says about Rava um, that he used to come early and this going to the shul. Benafik umashe right in uh, yade, and then he would uh, wash his hands. Umanach tefillin, he would put tefillin, umvarech, and then the bless. The chi itzrich zmana achariti, and if he needed a different time, ayal lebetek he said, benafik umashe yade. So then he would go into the shul, right? Uh, I'm sorry, he would go into the bathroom, 
come out and wash his hands, and uh, put the in, and don't bless and bless. Umashma, so it's mashma from this Gemara, it implies like this, Vadai she'aya maniach tefillin kol ayom, that Rav, Rav was wearing tefillin all day. Right? And back in those days, that's the way it was, right? They used to wear tefillin all day. Kashem Mesir Otam, Kedid, he connects the Betak, he said, ah, so when he takes it off to go to the bathroom, Vadai haya al-dat lachazor l'chanicham. His intention was to come back right away and put them. Yeah, because she had said the people, Nevertheless, he was blessing, right? So it wasn't the same thing. Also applies with tzitzit, right? So in other words, going to the bathroom is, a, is an interruption. Oh, think about it. Ah, yeah, no, you don't have to think really actively about it. No, just not to divert your mind. You know what I mean? To think about something else. That's the whole thing. You know, you know, get something something else into your head. Okay, so you don't have to constantly actively think about it because otherwise that would drive us crazy, right? It wasn't given, the Torah wasn't given to angels, right? It was given to people after all. Same thing that says in Shibol Leket. This language is Shibol Leket. Tzitzit afal grab the loash kechan the mitzah behesech adat. Ah, so he says, even though regarding tzitzit, right? We don't really find that it was uh, asur because of diversion. Mevarech aleha kol zman she mitatef. You have to bless every time you, you put it on. Because the mashma peh katchel, like it's mashma within menachot, Okay. So I guess we'll stop here, guys. You know, it's already 41. Kazaku Baruch. Thanks for coming. We got something done. Baruch Hashem. Okay. There's no politics today, right? No politics. Oh, thank, you. Baruch Hashem. thank you, Rabbi. Uh, hey, nice to see you, Nisim. Nice to see you, too, Rabbi. Thank you. Adam Tov. Rabbi. You don't mind if I ask you a question, like in a different type of right about No, not, not at all. You won't get mad? <laughs> no, seriously. I'll try to avoid the madness <laughs> if I can. Um, sounds yeah. stupid, but just to be sure.